I think um, the best thing about having God in our relationship, like seriously having him, is having a consistent mediator. Yeah. The Ho Holy Spirit is a constant mediator. You know, it won't allow, if one of us is wrong, it won't allow us to sit here and be long for wrong or it'll drive us crazy. You know, yeah. like I remember I, I was like holding a grudge against you and I was mad at you and, you know, I was like, you know, I'm throwing <laughs> my little fit. I could not sleep the whole night, y'all. Right, I tossed right, right. and turned and I'm trying to rest while I'm trying to hold a grudge and make Brandon feel bad, et cetera. And I, y'all, I couldn't keep my eyes closed for like yeah. two seconds, you know? So, and it drove me crazy even the whole next day. It just drove me crazy until finally I was like, are we going to talk? You know, like, we need talk. <laughs> we need talk. Let me go talk. I'm trying to talk. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, baby. You want to talk? You yeah. know, like. Mm -hmm. Hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Jasmine. And I'm Brandon. And we are The Growing Dance. We really appreciate you guys coming to hang out with us today um, and chill with us in a pretty cozy setting. This is our our bedroom and we're chilling and um, we decided to answer some questions that we've had from um, some people on our blog. Um, and one of the biggest questions that Brandon seems to get asked is, how is it being married to a church girl? <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is pretty funny because it's not like you're married to a celebrity or something. But I yeah. guess um, being married to or dating a church girl is different than dating other women. So we're going to answer some of those questions. Yeah, today. we'll answer some of those questions for you guys. Well, I don't know if you all know that, but my wife is a PK. And for those of you that don't know what a PK is, I'm going to let my wife just kind of explain how it was growing up as a PK. Her dad is a pastor, so PK, yeah, pastor's go. kid. Yeah, so PK, is the, that's the general description, pastor's kid. So um, I was a military brat growing up, and we bounced around from country to country and city to city, state to state. Um, and my dad was a pastor or a minister everywhere we went. And so um, my parents did ministries four hours away from our home, two hours away from our home. We got lucky finally in the end and it was only like 30 minutes away, but I pretty much grew up in the back of a van going to church on Always at church. Always Sundays and church. Wednesdays and Saturdays <laughs> and group meeting and prayer meeting and a hundred and men and women in white and a lot, a lot. <laughs> a lot, a lot, of, a lot of church, a, a lot, lot of, of church. church. So, um, you know, the church scene is very different, um, and I guess it depends on what you grew up in, but I grew up Baptist, so um, our church scene was the Baptist Convention, the National Baptist Convention, um, Colorado Baptist Convention, and then when we finally moved, it was the Kansas State Baptist Convention. So yeah. um, I spent, I would say, a good 70% of my lifetime being involved in something um, related in some way or another to church. I would say dating, dating, um, dating and being married to someone that's a PK. I would say dating you when we first met, we were in high school. Uh, I didn't really have a problem with it. It was not a big problem. Um, I enjoy, I remember I used to go to church with you, you know, when your dad used to preach and you all used to sing and had a few things going on. Um, a nice small home feel to your church. It was absolutely fine. I didn't feel any pressure to be anyone that I wasn't. However, things changed a little bit <laughs> when I when I got into college. Things changed a little bit, mainly because my faith was starting to waver a little bit. I lost lost all of my faith. So when Jazz and I started back talking um, in college and after college, um, I, I think I felt a little more intimidated. And once we got serious this last time around, I was definitely intimidated by her walk and by her faith um, because I still wasn't quite sure if I, if I believed or not. Um, actually this last time around, I knew I believed, but I was still kind of growing. I was still, you know, just a, um, I was still, I would say in the embryonic stage of, um, of my belief. And I felt like she was light years ahead of me. And I guess I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. It bothered me. It bothered us both. Yeah. It, it bothered me. Why did it bother me? Well, I know at one point in time, like when you were talking about being married and being together for real, for real, I was kind of like, I'm not oh, marrying yeah, anybody yeah, that's it, not. Yeah, that, it bothered me because her, her biblical standards for a husband, you like, know, for a potential husband, I didn't, I don't know if I met one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but.
but I was intimidated and it was because of that list, y'all. She had a she had like this laundry list of of things that her husband should be, need to be, and if he ain't this, guess what? I don't want it. It wasn't a laundry list, but it seemed like a laundry list to Brandon because you didn't really have many requirements in your other. <laughs> like, keep it real though. Like, did you know? I don't think in any of your past relationships, you correct me if I'm wrong, if you had, like, if someone said, like, these are my standards and I'm not wavering. So if you can't meet these, let me know so I can bounce. Uh, yeah, that so was, that my was list really, seemed yeah, like it yeah. was a long laundry list because. It was the first list you probably gotten. I've never, I've never really been compared. At that point, I had never been compared to a biblically, a biblical um, husband. I've never been compared to a biblical husband, and so I knew, you know, part of me um, just nervous because I knew I didn't line up. I knew I didn't um, fit the build of of someone that she was looking for. But I knew, I knew how I felt about her, um, and I just knew that I was struggling with my faith, and I wanted to, I wanted to get it right. So. Um, she was perfect for me at the time, you know, kind of kind of gave me a boost and it really encouraged me just to, you know, get into my word more um, because I wanted to have conversation with her. I wanted to, um, you know, I guess pick your brain a little bit, definitely dissect scripture with you. Um, I wanted to be a better prayer. Um, and I remember we fasted for the first time. You know, I just remember oh, yeah. all of my first. Let me tell you, one one night, um, <laughs> no, one night we were on the phone, baby. You remember this? One night we were on the phone and... and um, <sighs> Jazz was like, <laughs> let me tell you, she was like, um, yeah, babe, can you pray? My heart, I'm telling y'all, my heart just, I, you know, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 man, I was saying the same, same yeah. old, I remember you um, told me that. prayer. You were like, I said the same small snippet prayer oh, my yeah. entire life. I remember, I can quote it right now. Um, I, 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 kept, I, I continued to say the same prayer. And so when she, um, when she asked me to pray, I was like, I can't pray the same old prayer as if she knew what it was. I was like, I can't just pray this old same old stale prayer. So I got it, you know. I felt like I, I felt like I needed to show her I could pray, um, and really I was so nervous. I did not want to do it, um, but I remember it was short. It was sweet. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> it was short. And sweet. It, it was short. It was sweet, man. And I tried not to, you know, yeah. use any type of fancy words, anything like that. Yeah, me um, too. I wanted her to know that I could step up to the plate, even though she didn't know I was on the spot, but she put me on the spot. I was nervous as heck, man. Um, so, yeah. For me, being a PK and growing up in the church, you know, when they tell you, you know, when a man finds a wife, you know, he finds a good thing. And these are the characteristics that you need to look for in your husband, you know. And it's, you know, can he lead your family? You know, can he pray? Can he cover you? You know, um, is he protecting you? Can, you know, does he know the Bible? Does he know the Lord? Does he have a relationship? And I was in love with Brandon and had been for a very long time, but he did not match up to those qualities. And um, I was definitely heading him in a lot of those things. And so that caused some insecurity for me because I was like, am I about to make the wrong decision? Because I'm, you know, crazy about this guy and I have been for a long time, but yeah uh you know we might be out here struggling for a minute you know <laughs> um you know it was it was a huge leap of faith and to be honest if it weren't for the fact that like when i was praying the lord told me like you know this is your husband calm down you know take the steps then i might have been out i yeah, might have been I'm, out because i'm you know it just it didn't come packaged like yeah, this it didn't yeah. come packaged like people think you know fairy tales and even some of these christian couples we see you know they're like oh we prayed separately for four days and four nights but didn't know each other and then we bumped into each other and the grace of god just yeah, it didn't happen yeah. like that for us okay yeah. ours was a lot of uh blind faith and trusting god when god told brandon this is your wife and when God told me this is your husband neither one of us were ready to be a husband or a wife and so it was even though Brandon didn't know, he was yeah. taking some blind faith steps and, you know, just trusting that it was going to work out and he would get to where he needed to get. And um, God was kind of helping me build my patience during that time and saying like, hey, you know, he's he's not looking like it. It don't look like what it's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. But, you know, trust me, I'm working behind the scenes far beyond what you can, you know, work. And God did some really cool things and I wasn't even around. I wasn't present for I didn't know. But God was, you know, orchestrating things and putting people in Brandon's life and that were encouraging him and building his faith. So Absolutely. Yeah, but you know, another another tough struggle that I had, um, was knowing that she was a PK, knowing that she grew up in a church and I would see her um 
do and say things that really didn't line up to what I thought um, a PK should be street. living like. Yeah. Living like, you know, so mm -hmm. that kind of bothered me too. And I was like, man, you know, she PK, but, um, you know, she, if I'm being real, she got, she got a couple problems. You know, she, yeah. you know it's like she got some, some serious problems. Damn. Um, but it wasn't until I was able to grow in my belief that I was able to really understand, um, what was going on, right? So I got a, I got a full understanding of, of what she was going through, what she had went through. But at the time, I was just so thrown. And again, I'm struggling with my belief and faith anyways. And I got um, my potential wife over here. That's, She's human. Yeah, that's human, right? Um, imperfect. And I'm over here judging the heck out of her. Like, well, you're supposed to be high and mighty. Why aren't you, you know, yeah. high, high and mighty? PK, right? Yeah. You're supposed to have it all together. But I think people do have this image um, that, that um, pastor kids have it all together and they're perfect. And that's definitely not the case. One thing that Brandon stated about me in the last video is that I'm, I'm very, very, um, I like to stick to my close inner circle. And a big reason, if not the reason, is because I am a PK. And it's extremely hard for people who are human, we're not Jesus, we're not God, yeah. um, but people put us on a pedestal. They put our families, they put our parents on this pedestal as if we're not human, like we can't make mistakes. Um, but it's it's so hard to be human. It's so hard to grow up your teenage years and make these mistakes. You know, it's so hard to yeah. um, to live this life and be transparent with people without them constantly judging you or feeling like you constantly have the wrath of people on you if you make a mistake. And so um, a very, very early, I decided that I was not going to be, you know, the person with a million and one buddies and friends. I decided, <laughs> I very early, I decided that. I mean, I just saw too many situations where I just felt like, you know, we're human too. And yeah. people will not allow us to be human. They won't you know, they tell you, you're a PK, you're not allowed to go down during testimony service and share your, you know, testimony, you know, or, yeah, yeah. hey, you can't go, you know, to this event, you know, if you go to this women's event, you have a strong secret and you want to release it, you can't release it because all these people will be in your business and they'll know and it'll affect your parents and it, you know, so it's like, um, there's so much of your life that you have to keep private that it almost hinders your, um, your relationship as far as church goes because yeah. you have to keep in a, a level of privacy so that um so that you're not hindering the ministry yeah. as a whole yeah. um but then you have to so find people don't an, have nothing to talk about right? yeah so, so the people don't have anything to, yeah so that yeah and so that it doesn't trickle over into your parents or whatever the case is so you have to keep a level of privacy and um it makes it really hard to develop relationships and so that's why i stuck very very close to my brother and um, the four people that I call my siblings, yeah. um, we just all were really have been really close. Um, and those are like really the only people that I could say like actually really know us, know me, know my parents is because um, it's just extremely hard being in those positions where people don't allow you yeah. to to even breathe. You almost feel like you have to keep a perfect face all the time. And it's almost a, it's almost an unfair weighted scale, you know, because you, yeah. you know, um, you're weighing you, me with yeah, Jesus, you, you and that never happened. You expect, um, you know, you expect perfection. You expect no wrong, you know. Mm -hmm. And when you see it, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Instead of looking at yourself, you know, you're like, whoa, yeah. uh, I didn't, I didn't expect that. It's an unfair position for any kid or anyone to grow up on because. You want to tell people, you know, you don't don't think you're better than us, you know, don't put yeah. yourself on a pedestal. But to be honest, most of the time people put you on that pedestal. They yeah, hold you absolutely. to these high expectations. Absolutely. They hold you to this level of perfection. And um, and then when you don't live up to the level of perfection that they've held for you, then it's like a massacre at times. And so yeah. um, that made it really hard for me to do anything or want to branch out with many people just because it was it was a tough position to be in and then if you're involved in any conventions my parents were involved in the Kansas State Convention so my dad was like the director of this the moderator of this the president yeah. of this my mom's the president of this or you know whatever and then you're like <laughs> not only do I have my church to deal with but I have the entire state of mm -hmm. Baptist Christians to deal with <laughs> it's like it's a whole new level and so just the lifestyle that we grew up in was yeah definitely very different we had two different viewpoints of church i did a lot of behind the scenes backgrounds yeah. um 
and working in the church versus Brandon just kind of seeing it I from did, the other I did, side. I did a lot of um, a lot of horse playing, a lot of flirting. I did that too. Just a lot of sleeping in between all my work. I was getting pinched in church. <laughs> I got lots of whooping. I was uh, <laughs> I was fake shouting in church. I never did. You that. know? <laughs> oh, you never fake shout? Mm -mm. Oh man. For what? Huh? For what? So they can get up out your face with their hand when they come to you like this. Jesus! <laughs> that never happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> we used to fake shout, man. We used to get hands laid on us and just fall out because that's what we seen other people do. Yeah. You know, that's what yeah. we we saw other people do that. So you so never really had a relationship is what you're saying, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I don't feel like I had a relationship with God when I was younger. Um, You know, I was baptized and everything. Like I said, I used to go to church and, you know, the pastor, you know, he's preaching. But, you know, my mom's amening and jumping up. Clearly, she understands. I don't I don't understand. I understand, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not comprehending what's going on in here. All I know is that it's hot. It's about 2 o'clock. Um, we normally get out and say hi to folk and leave. You know, I was, I was there for the social hour. Seriously. I honestly, I knew God and I knew a lot about him. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really develop a real relationship with God until I actually started going through trials of my own. Yeah. So, you know, I could kind of rely on my parents for stuff all the way throughout middle school, high school and things. But when I got to college and I was by myself, that's when I really started to develop a relationship with God. And even then it was like a, pu a push and pull, you know, yeah. because you're like, I'm in college. I want to do all these fun things. So I'm trying to go this way. But then God is trying to pull you this way. And so. I definitely, you know, I still think about that to this day. I'm like, man, I hope serving, I didn't hinder. Yeah, I'm like, I hope I didn't hinder people while I was, you know, tug or warring, you know, yeah. trying to decide if I really wanted to 100% serve, which it's a college is a hard time to decide you really want to concrete yeah, serve the Lord. Um, Absolutely. So I, I, even now I think about that and I'm like, I hope I didn't hinder people, you know, as I was going through my own human struggle of being, right, right. you know, pulled in different directions and trying to decide, you know, what I really wanted to do. Yeah. So I would say that it was definitely intimidating at first, but now I'm just, you know, I just have such a high level of gratitude um, for the the faith that she has, right? Um, not even the knowledge of the Bible, it's, it's the implementation of of the wise counseling and of the word that we get, you know, while we're in church is her putting it into action. You know, it's us actually um, praying together, um, good times and bad times. You know, it's us fasting together. It's us, um, you know, just, just being connected, you know, and, and, and God speaking to us when the other's praying and we have no idea what, you know, I have no idea what Jazz is praying for. Um, but the Lord has turned it around in her favor, you know, with work through me. Um, she has no idea what I'm praying for. She has no idea what I'm talking to God about. But I can see the change in her. So um, yeah. it's, it's, it's definitely, it's you, you definitely find um, that it's beneficial um, once you do get married and once you're, um, once you live in a, a God-ordained marriage with purpose. So being married um, and having God at the center is, seriously probably the best decision not probably it is the best decision that we had and so i think that's the cool thing about um growing up as a pk for me is because that was instilled in me from my childhood and so yeah. even when i'm frustrated even when i'm going through things it's never a matter of like is god real and i'm gonna stop going to church i'm gonna stop leaving. it's never a matter of that um if I falter and when I falter because I'm human, I say things like, Lord, can you speed up the process? Yeah, or Lord, yeah. when when is this happening? Or Lord, are you really going to let me deal with these situations? Um, which honestly isn't that great either. But um, it's just I have the foundation that God is real and that, um, you know, you have to hold on through these situations. And so for yeah. me, having that foundation has been the best thing I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Best thing my parents ever gave me. I would say, um, well, I mean, you understand it was just, it, it was so many things that was new to me when, when me and Jazz started dating this last time around. So many things, like I said, she was holding me to these standards that I'd never been held to before. You mean to tell me that I can't just laugh and charm you and talk smooth and sweep you off your feet and um, us, us have sex and do this and do that and kiss and touch inappropriately all kinds of stuff and you not be happy you mean i actually have to live up to these standards yeah what is that 
Yeah. I don't know what that is. You sure you don't want to just go out and get a drink? <laughs> <laughs> I think like for yeah. Brandon, his your standards were different from my standards. And, yeah. You know, not that all my standards were right and all of his are wrong, but they yeah. were very, very different. And um, just as we started dating and things, I think that he, there were times where I might have um, expressed our differences in a way that might have made him feel insignificant um, because I would be like, that, that ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't wrong. That's, you know, and, you know, I should have expressed them in love, but a sister was struggling out here. Mm -hmm. um, so it was definitely really hard to um, express the amount of span standards that I had that were so high and to him just seemed yeah. above and beyond. Like, I love you. I'm nice to you. I'm not beating you. You know, I cuddle mm -hmm. you. I'm not cheating on you. That should be enough. You know, I'm like man, is that not enough? I yeah. ain't doing nothing out here. And I was like, What's up? no, that's What's not up? enough at all. What you, you going to church today? Nah, nah, I ain't going. <laughs> but what's up? You know, she like after church, you know, it just um, yeah. So he would. I I think I did. I was kind of harsh on you in those moments, you know, where you didn't understand because I wanted you to just get it right now. Yeah, yeah. You didn't really, you didn't really demand these things. But she was just like, hey, man, these are non-negotiables, you know, and these are just kind of must-haves um, in my relationship. You know, I have to have someone that loves God and that's serious about it, you know, because if all of this come tumbling down, what does our foundation look like, you mm -hmm. know? So, yeah. Yeah. I remember telling my mom when we were dating, I'm like, something in me just submits to him. And I don't, I don't know what it is. And so, had I, you know not had a relationship with the Lord, it could have been totally different. You know, it could have just been built on lust or other things. But I knew that the Lord was telling me like, this is your husband. And it's not, it don't, it does not look perfect. It don't look like all the memes tell you it's supposed to look. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't look like every women's self-help book and other people are not going to agree with where I'm telling you that you're about to go, but you're not going anywhere that I've put them. So of course, they're not going to agree because I've had them on path A and I'm putting you on path H. And this is a new era and I need you to minister to people that don't have the perfect relationship, that, that are not relationship goals, that haven't gone down the area. And so um, just having that confirmation from God, like this does not look how other people are going to tell you it's going to look, yeah. but I'm going to use it for my glory, kept me sticking there even when I was like, whoo. Yeah, no. Really. I got them that really. that itch. I'm about to run. I'm about to roll out. Yeah, that's real. I know I didn't line up to anything, so I know that um, you know, I want to say it was you taking a chance, but I know it was nobody but the Lord. So yeah, it was God. It was nobody but God um that put us in those positions and to show you that hey, He's not perfect, um, but He's for you. So I think that was kind of neat, and I think that the best thing, if I had to state the best thing um about dating the PK is just knowing that she has a relationship with the Lord, marrying her, making her your wife, and then letting her instill some of those same core values into your kids. Granted, we don't have any kids yet, but um, just to know what she stands for, what she stands for means so much to me. Yeah. Um, and, it's, and, it's, and it's a blessing to see her grow. So I have a question. What's so, up, Gary? Um, did you ever feel pressured by outside sources, you know, that said, you know, hey, you're dating a PK now. You need to dress this way. You need to act this way. You need to do these things. Did you ever feel pressured to change, you know, just the basics of you? Not necessarily on the inside, but the basics, how you dressed, you know, where you went, things you did to live up to a mold of what they thought maybe. I didn't. It was actually the complete opposite, but it had nothing to do with you. I just remember I would... um you know, I've always associated church with suit and tie. I've always associated church with dress shoes and um, and being dressed to the nines, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just something, you know, I just, you know, through my growth, I was like, man, this stuff is not, it's not important. Um, I wanted to be comfortable. I wanted to be casual. Um, I knew what I was going to church for. So I just kind of, you know, I just, I just dressed like me. Um, dating you, man, I wasn't trying to, you know, be fancy or anything. I was just, just trying to be fly. You know, I was just trying to be be fly. Um, I could just see my style just changing, anyways, because my body was changing, my mindset changing. Um, you know, getting a couple of muscles. You know, kind of want to show those off. But my style is always kind of changing, anyway. So yeah, I didn't feel any type of pressure to to dress differently or act differently. I've always um, I've always just stuck to being me. So 
Um, I thought the cool. I think the cool thing about that is that while God was changing those yeah. things in you, He had been slowly changing those things in me. In me. Yeah. So even though I've grown up tradi- traditional, yeah. you know, there were so many parts of me that started asking questions and started thinking like, is this necessary? Like, do we have to be in here five hours? You know, right. is it necessary right. to that to have this? You know every Sunday is it necessary to you know do all these things you know and then not even necessary are we doing the necessary things are we really doing what we're supposed to be doing I started to get a lot of those questions you know I started to think are we really helping the poor are we really feeding the sick are we really you know and I started to get those thoughts and those changes and so it's just funny that we didn't really talk about that at that time but he was getting those thoughts from a different perspective of like well do i have to do this to love god yeah and then i was thinking like for god to love me yeah and then i was thinking you know is it necessary for me to continue to do this in order to serve god or is this the way route that god is taking me and you know obviously the the very cool thing i would say about god again is that we could be over here and he could be over here and god um, knows that we're eventually going to be here. And so in between here and here, God is just molding us so that when we get here, we're one. And so there are a lot of things that God started instilling in us and growing us up on separately, that yeah. s- we were completely yeah, separately, even when we weren't dating, even when we weren't in relationships or even speaking, God was working on these things individually with us. And so sometimes we'll talk about, you know, like, remember when we were dating, I was out doing this. And he'd say, you know, yeah, when I was dating, I started to or, you know, when I was dating someone else, I started to take an interest in this. And I was like, really? You know, and so we realized that we were going through a lot of similar things. And so just <laughs> encouragement for you guys as you're single, you know, if you're like, where's my husband or where's my wife or I'm just waiting on that moment. Like, trust that God is really working on you individually and that whoever he puts you with, whether it looks perfect or whether it doesn't look perfect, it's going to line up to what his will and calling is for both of your lives. And so, I mean, I think that's extremely awesome to know that we were both being crafted you know, for each other and minds being changed and hearts being changed. Absolutely. What God has for you is for you. It's for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No matter what you're going through. (laughs) Did I sing that note right, baby? No. Just remember that God is only using you. Yeah. So Brandon. The battle is not yours. Did you guys catch that yet? He can't sing. It's the Lord. (laughs) So we do have a guest for you guys. Come here. Come here. We have a guest for you. Why You've a been friend. a lazy bum. We phoned a friend today because a couple people were like, why did you bring him? He's been a lazy bum. And he's also a- afraid of everything. A lazy bum. Hey, say hi, PJ. No. <laughs> he's been a lazy bum today. So, yeah. This is this is our, our one child, our one baby. Yes, this is our kid here. <laughs> thank you guys for chatting with us for a little bit. Um, Thank you for sitting through our um, Q&A um, on dating a church girl but now i've been married to a church girl <laughs> um so thank you um we appreciate all the love all of the support don't forget to like comment and subscribe g1 g2, g2 signing out peace Bye. oh g3 hey g3 Bye. <laughs>